Hello, today is Saturday, August 29th, 2009, and here we are with Sister Dorothy Yale. Um, she's the director of the Barry Archives and Historical Collections at Barry University in Miami Shores. And my name is Eloisa Echazabal. I'm a former Pedro Pan child, and here is... My name is Carmen Romanash. I'm another Pedro Pan child. And uh, we are here to interview Sister Dorothy, so we are going to start now. <laughs> uh, this, uh, I just wanted to mention that these questions were already given to Sister Dorothy a few days ago, and she has reviewed them, and here we are going to be just commenting on them and sharing these uh, things with you. Thank you, Sister. So, first of all, we wanted to, to know your complete name. Well, my complete name is Sister Dorothy Yaley, and I'm an Adrian Dominican. Adrian, Michigan, Dominican. Um, I've been at Barry since 1971, and I've worked in the archives since 1991 when we, a uh, couple of us, uh, retiring sisters, set up the archives here. Okay. And can you tell us a little bit about your background and uh, what do you study? What's your major? What uh, is your education? Um, well, my bachelor's is from College of St. Francis in Joliet, Illinois. Bachelor's in English. Okay. Bachelor's BA and a Master's in, of Arts in English from John Carroll University in Cleveland, and uh, the Doctorate in Philosophy in English, again, from Loyola University, Chicago. And then I came here to Barry. That's okay. wonderful. What year did you come here to Barry, you said? I came to, in 71. 71, okay. So you started working at 71, and with the, you started working with the Pedro Pan Archives at that time? Or? No, because, uh, in fact, I had never even heard of them, but um, okay. and we didn't. And I was not. I was teaching English at that time, sharing okay. the department, but and English and foreign languages. But at any rate, um, we did get begin to get the to get the papers in uh, the nineties. Um, but when I came here, uh, I you know did hear people talk about Pedro Pan, but I didn't know what they were talking about really mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. the, it was pretty well finished. The program was pretty well finished, and there was little pub publicity. But um, some of, we have a school of social work here in fact, Monsignor Walsh encouraged the foundation of that school in order to supply social workers for the area. There simply weren't any down here. Okay. And for the Pedro Pan program, he needed them. Mm -hmm. And um, so I heard sometimes, you know, social workers make some mention of Pedro Pan or people ask about it. Okay. Yeah. But, um, then when we received, then um, when, as soon as Sister G, um, Gina Lawton really had it, initiated the, the um, uh, archival program here, encouraged us to get it going. Um, Monsignor Walsh contacted her to take the papers because he wanted them placed in a place where they would be secure. He wanted a Catholic foundation if possible. But at any rate, he wanted a place where he thought they would be secure and they would be cared about and they would be processed, papers would be processed and presented to the public so that people could go back, like you people, mm -hmm. Pedro Pan's children particularly, could go back and see their papers and you know look up information if they wanted to. And um, he, the first papers actually arrived in 1995 in uh, August, hot August day. They were <laughs> like transported. <today>. Like <laughs> <today>. <laughs> That's right. They were transported by an open truck <laughs> by a couple of social, um, workers from Barry. But anyway, um, we began working with the papers insofar as we were surveying them, appraising them, deciding what to do about them. And um, in January 1996, two of the nuns who had had experience, well, at an MLIS in one case, uh, in archiving, a uh, recent one, uh, she and another uh, uh, person who had done a lot of um, secretarial work in our congregation and was thoroughly familiar with the new computers at that time, 1996. Mm -hmm. um, but anyhow, she was at ease using the mark, making, creating mark records. And that's what we uh, did. We worked with the uh, Society of American Archivists. We went to meetings, we took workshops, uh, attended special sessions, and we used a special program, MicroMark, developed at the Michigan State University. Um, and we contacted, director of the program, I can't think of his name, he received an award from the SAA last year for this program. Mm -hmm. But anyway, um, 
uh, we worked with them to get going and if there was any question we could call them and get professional advice. Mm -hmm. So we got the program going and um, another young woman from Barry worked on the um, archiving too. Uh, she did the, um, again she moved into the um, um, recording on the, um, the part of the program, recording it on uh, on, on oh, the Mark, the Mark Records, yeah. yes, on the, tel on the computer. And um, Mary Montes, she's now at the University of Miami in another program over there. Mm -hmm. But um, we got them finished in a couple, several years. It took, it took a while a because there were over yeah. 8,000. But uh, what did you know, your first reaction when you first heard these stories, you know, what was actually happened to us? Well, I was amazed then? because I had not heard about it. I had been in Chicago at the time of this mm -hmm. threat at work. The program, and I really had not heard anything. Of it. Well, I had, but I didn't realize what it was. Mm -hmm. I had a couple Pedro Pan children in my high school class okay. in um, Elgin, Illinois, oh, during wow. these years. The children were sent there to a well. In the long oh, in the long run, they w were with their parents. I, but anyhow, there were some Pedro Pan children yes. in that area, um, and th that's when I first heard. But as I say, I made no connection with anything down here. Right. And you have been working with her for us for a long time. <laughs> yeah. Sister, and when did you meet Monsignor Walsh? And can you tell us something about his personality, um, his uh, most salient characteristic? You know, how would you define him? And when did you meet him first? Well, he, he's really unassuming. He seemed like just an ordinary guy. <laughs> but he really was unusual. Um, he, um, he, got, he, he got along with everybody. Not hail fellow well met, but just a nice, friendly fellow, like your brother or somebody, you know, you, and you didn't pay much attention to him. He wasn't so outstanding in that sense. But um, whenever an issue, well, he was very much concerned with social issues, mm -hmm. um, particularly whether they related to the church, but he was mostly concerned about the individual. That's why the Pedro Pan movement was so successful. I think he cared about the children and their parents, and he's always asking, you know, what about the parents? What do they know? Or the, this was during the program itself, judging from things that we read. But, um, and the kids come back to see him. They care about him. They want to see him. They're not interested so much. In, well, they care about the papers. I don't want to de deny that. But um, it's, it's, it, it, when he was alive, they wanted to see him. Anyhow, um, I first met him. I had heard about him because he was you know, in the area, and he came over to Barry occasionally and said mass or something. But um, I guess... Um, he, he was, oh I know, he was being interviewed by Sister Eileen Rice in the history department who did oral histories for people in the area, people well known, rather well known in the area. Like we're doing with you now. <laughs> That's right, <laughs> okay, same thing. And uh, she invited him and she said maybe I would like to come since we had the archives and since we were writing, supposed to get those papers. Well I said, what papers? <laughs> Little uh, did you know. Because <laughs> they didn't mean a thing to me to be honest. Mm. And I, I hadn't made any connection yet with any, you know, thing. Well, anyway, um, I did speak to them at him then after the interview. I met him, and you know, he was just nice and noncommittal and ordinary priest, I, you know. Yeah. And and in a way, he was just an ordinary priest. He was from Ireland, but he didn't have a heavy brogue or anything. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, he was friendly, and so you know, we just said uh, we'd see each other again, and that was it. But and what year was that? Do you remember the year? Or? Um, it was probably, well, it was in the middle of the mid-90s. Yes, okay. okay. Yeah, it's fine. It's just... Uh, 96, mm -hmm. no, it was before that. Before we had the papers, actually. Mm -hmm. When were the airport logs um, and documents brought to Barry? Well, you just mentioned it, in the 90s. Mm -hmm. okay. the yeah, the first thing was the 16 filing cabs, steel filing cabinets, some with broken locks, some still locked, uh, brought, the, the, brought the case files. All the 8,000 case files are in those 16 steel filing mm -hmm. cabinets. And they had been locked up and in storage for several years at that point. Mm -hmm. Over at Catholic Charities. Yes, in wherever their reserve area was. Right. And um, did Monsignor Walsh express any thoughts or ideas of what he wanted to do with these documents at that time? Did he, what, what were his plans? What did he tell you about? Well, I thought they would sit, you know, I thought we would process them and they would be there like precious books or <laughs> sacred mm -hmm. books or something. 
and it sort of left forever, and then occasionally some eminent individual would come to see them or something. Well, of course, I know not a Pedro Pan children are mm -hmm. eminent individuals, but I didn't realize that then. But anyway, um, it's been a much more public affair than I had ever thought. I mean, I just thought nobody would ever come to see those papers as such. And as for historical importance, well, it hadn't struck me yet. And Cuba, well, Cuba was a nice little island that I wasn't particularly interested in. I mean, I had start, taught Cuban children, Cuban exile children, children of some of the officials of mm -hmm. Cuba in the older days, well-known names. But it still didn't impress me the same right. way. Mm -hmm. When you say um, you process them, what have what has kind of uh, what kind of process you know have we done with the documents or with the files so far? I know that we still have a lot to do, and that's why we need to do the fundraising campaign. But so far, you've organized a lot of them, and right. Well, the first thing you have to do with archives, if you especially if you think the papers are important and will be looked at for some time to come, you have to go through them, check them, just to make it very simple. Uh, it's a it can't be quite process, but we tried to keep it to a minimum because we knew that the main thing was to get the papers out while everybody was still alive. And um, But you have to mm -hmm. go through and it's just what you do with school papers. At the end of the year, the papers that you are keeping, the records, the permanent records, you have to be sure that they're smoothed out and that if there's paper that won't last, that you may have to copy them on another kind of paper, things like that. We did not recopy anything in Pedro Pound. For one thing, we thought it was too important. There was no point in taking a chance on losing anything. And besides, everything had been cleaned up for preservation in the first place. As the kids left, the um, clerical staff at our, the archdiocese had, or Catholic Charities, had arranged the papers for preservation, but not formally the way we were doing it. Right and now you're referring to the children's individual case files, I'm right? The case of the first thing we had. That's what we started with, and I thought that was it. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. it's a, and so, but anyhow, we got those in order so to speak, and uh, the people started working on them, you know, catching any errors that we had missed, or catching anything. Right. That we needed. But anyway, besides that then, um, what, well, every so often, after we got up here to the archives, we really had an archives. Now that, that building was finished around 96 or so. That's why, that's why, I guess, when Cedar brought the papers, no, he, well, I don't know, at any rate, the papers came before we were in here. But, um, um, at any rate, uh, he would walk in sometimes with something or, well, I thought this, this is, I didn't expect any more papers, but a few times he brought things, <laughs> including the airport log. Well, of course, he didn't just bring three books in the airport log. He brought a lot of other boxes which had extra, a couple extra copies, not bound, uh, or in a, boat, in a binder, uh, in boxes and falling out and stuff like that. And people would come with him, maybe a couple guys carrying some of these things, and sometimes uh, a box or two got dropped on route, or a drawer fell out of a filing cabinet, and, <laughs> and that happened even with the case files. But uh, everything seemingly, well, whenever I was present, <laughs> everything got back in. Right. 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 As we've never discovered anything really missing, mm -hmm. but we've sure discovered things out of order. Now, with right. the case files, that's not true. I know that one, I was there when the case file, one case file fell to the ground down the steps, an outside stairway as we have in the shores. Nobody got hurt, right? Nobody <laughs> got hurt. Okay. No, but my pride. <laughs> your, your pride? <laughs> well, I had, well, I had thought I had arranged for, well, anyway, I didn't have too much to do with the <laughs> transportation, but I didn't arrange it too well. But anyhow, um, everything was picked up and put back in immediately. Uh, one of the, when we were moving the, um, incidentally, when we were moving the um, case files from storage to Barry University Library, first floor where they first were held for a couple of weeks. Um, one of the former um, uh, workers in the program uh, was, was helping us get them out because she knew about them. She was helping them get out of the, the building. And her, she had a couple teenage sons. And luckily the two teenage sons help, helped come, helped carry the mm -hmm. material, the, the um, files down the um, outside staircase. Mm -hmm. and one of our own maintenance men did too, but it, our maintenance man could never, I think he'd still be doing it. <laughs> Even, it was a big job. But when the, when the drawer fell out, it was her son who uh, picked up 
So a lot of people got involved. I yes. mean, the, the hands of many people were involved yes. in that transportation. And, and I know it sounds like they were all loving hands. And they were, they, and they considered it very important. Yes. And the son was very concerned that the papers not hit the ground. Well, <laughs> the drawer hit the ground. But uh, <laughs> Wonderful. Uh, and sisters, thank you so much for being taking so much care for all those papers all these years. Because we know it's, although you didn't know anything about us before, I know we, you treat us with a lot of love and care. And well, that's yeah, well, that. that obvious that somebody else had cared. <laughs> I, I didn't know much, no. no. But, <laughs> but what did you, did. Sister, what did you enjoy the most about you know, your work with the Pedro Pan Files and um, you know, the children looking for the files or getting that. <laughs> well, and you, or learning about. Uh, well, learning about I, just learning about the program and you know how much the parents cared to get their children out. And I was familiar with that aspect to some extent because I'd been in Chicago and had been involved with some of these movements and knew some of the people who had you know fled and things like this. And uh, actually, did know some of the people who had fled. I, as I said before, I talked some of the children. I talked to their parents, but. Um, it, it, it was really, you know, you felt like you're really touching primary sources here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was interesting. Mm -hmm. and Good. Is anything else that you would like to share with us, with other Pedro Panes? Mm -hmm. or? Well, you asked about anything else, um, about Monsignor Walsh. I was going to say, the man was very intelligent. Uh, he had always won <clears throat> the, well, he had, in, in, in the Irish school that he attended. They were still giving out a prize every year for different mm -hmm. kinds of achievement, math and English and general achievement and all that. And he got the math medal most years, sometimes oh, the right. all-around medal, all-around excellence. I don't he was think very, a lot of people know that. Mm -hmm. No, I was very surprised. Um, he said to me once when he was, I don't know, just talking about jobs.